Remember, you always want to train rotational strength in both directions as well as lateral moving. Most exercises are always done. None of y'all stopping me. Don't need the axe. Chopping trees, planting seeds, planting schemes. Crossing eyes, stopping T's. Lines are blurred, I cannot see. For I die, I'm top three. For I die, I'm top three. For I die, look. This is the moment I waited. I took all my options and weighed them. This is a clock. Yes. What's going on, YouTube? You're back with the Prez. We're in Juniper Park today, but we're not at the bars. Today, we're in the baseball field or on the hill where I had to do my conditioning work, some sprint work, right? Conditioning is often neglected in this channel, especially lately. You guys see all my workouts have been strength focused. I very rarely do any high rep sets now, any high endurance type training. And one thing that I notice, especially now that I'm pushing close to 175 pounds, is that when I do try to do endurance based sets, high rep sets, that I get more fatigued a lot quicker. One, that's due to the fact that I'm deconditioned. I'm not training that style right now. And two, I put on some extra pounds. So everything that I used to do is gonna be generally harder anyways. So one way I like to do my conditioning, which keeps my muscles fresh and not really dampening into any type of recovery, is I love to do drills on the hill and I like to use my medicine slam ball. So it's gonna be a quick 20 minute session today. I'm gonna put you through my whole conditioning workout. We're gonna start on the hill with some sprint work and then I'm gonna end with some full body conditioning work with the medicine slam ball. So stay tuned, let's go. All right, so before we get into any uphill sprinting, it's important to warm up the lower body, right? You don't wanna jump right into an excessive explosive movement like sprinting uphill, because then you could risk getting an injury a lot easier, right? So. Make sure you go through a decent, thorough warm-up before you get into any explosive movement. So we started with some uphill lunges, and once I got to the top of the hill, we went into some high kicks to really warm up the hip flexors, the hamstrings, then went to a side shuffle, again, to warm up the adductors, the hips, and everything else in the lower body. Then another warm-up, we're going to do backwards uphill walking, again, we're going to be taking big strides here, really warming up the posterior chain, the glutes, the hamstrings, the calves. You're gonna get a lot of activation doing that uphill, backwards walking. And then coming back down, we just do a few explosive squat jumps down, which now we're gonna be placing more emphasis on the quads and the eccentric loading. Again, really forcing stabilization of the whole lower body. And now we're gonna be getting ready to get into some sprint work. All right, before we get into our main sprint work, we're going to do two sprint warm-up sets, very short distance, just starting in what would be like a track starting position, right, with one leg down in that lunge or that 90 degree position, and we do it for each limb, really trying to be explosive off the start, right, so this is going to really engage a lot of that quad in the leading leg and a lot of the hamstring and posterior explosive strength coming right off the bat, right? So this is warming up again, really activating the nervous system. Just one set on each leg there before we get into the main sprint work. All right, getting into the main sprint work. We did four sets, two times. So eight total uh, rounds of sprints. And we're starting each sprint set with a rotational aspect to the movement. So we start the first two rounds with 180 degree jumps right into a sprint. Remember, rotational functionality, rotational agility, rotational strength is often under trained. Nobody ever trains rotational aspects, especially in calisthenics, because it's not required in any tournaments. And it's a function that the body should be able to perform consistently, right? Because if you can't rotate, you're going to be getting injured down the line. So it's very important to include some rotational aspect in your training. And we did the first two sets with 180 degree jumps. So I started facing the camera. First I jumped left, then I jumped right, and sprinted after each. Now I'm gonna go right into 270 degree jumps, which is gonna be a three quarter jump, 75% of the way of a 360. So, boom, that's 270. We do a 270 one way, then we sprint, we come right back down, hit it again. This is gonna build explosive power in the legs, rotational or trunk strength, being able to rotate the core, 
And again, guys, it's going to build explosive power, elevate the heart rate, and we're not going to be Grab fatiguing it. our upper body too much doing work like this. And you're going to see Scrap is on the other side of the park. I'm calling him over now. And uh, this is the fourth set of the round. Like I said, we did two total rounds, so eight sets of sprints. So now we're going to be doing a 270 in the other direction. So we're right. I'm jumping to the right in a round right there. And again, sprinting right up. So that was four sets in the first round. I'm going to rest two minutes, perform one more set of these four rounds, and that's going to be the sprint work, and then we got more work to do. Let's go. Remember, you always want to train rotational strength in both directions, as well as lateral moving. Most exercises are always done you know, on the sagittal or frontal plane. So you want to make sure you're including those transverse plane, those rotational movements, and those lateral movements to keep the body agile and functional. All right, so I did two rounds of those rotational sprints. So you guys saw the whole first set. It was four total sprints in the set. First, rotating from the left, the rotating 180 to the left, then rotating 180 to the right, a sprint after each, and then it was a full 270 from here all the way around. Then again, back around this way, a sprint after each. So eight total sprint sets. And mind you, it's a very short distance, right? I'm probably only sprinting maybe 20, 25 yards with a slight incline. Typically, if I'm doing rounds of sprints straight, I'm doing much longer, close to 50, 60 yard dashes with the hill included, right? So like I say, this is all conditioning work. Remember, conditioning is important because it's going to give, allow your body to uptake more oxygen and become more efficient with your, with your calisthenic training, your weight training. It's not only gonna be for endurance, right? Or endurance purposes. It's gonna have a translation over to being able to do more reps, hit more multiple supersets types, hit more multiple supersets in a row without getting fatigued. So this endurance training, this conditioning work, is gonna have a great carryover to your weight training or your calisthenic training. You're trying to hit those five minute drills, those barbarian requirements. Your muscles are gonna to have to be very endurance, very high in endurance and very high in strength in order, to be able to, in order to be able to complete those routines. And you guys can see, heart rate is still up from those sprint sets right now. So we're just gonna end the routine now with the slam ball. We're gonna start with a full body movement where we're doing over the head tosses. I'm gonna go for 10 tosses that way. 10 tosses back for 20 total tosses in the set. And we got the 30 pound slam ball out today, guys. So 10 each way, overhead tosses. And remember, use your legs, use your hips. Don't just make this a lower back exercise. heart rate is highly elevated right now and I'm not really fatiguing any muscles that I trained yesterday because yesterday was a heavy weighted pull and weighted dip session and they are feeling a little sore today right so this type of movement this type of training is actually going to help facilitate recovery to those muscles because you're indirectly training them without directly stimulating the muscle or breaking it down because these full body movements are still going to engage the back is still gonna engage the chest. Like again, like I said, they're a full body movement. So everything is gonna get some engagement without actually being broken down. This is gonna facilitate blood flow 
and oxygen to those muscles. And now we're building up and generating more work capacity that's gonna translate over to our calisthenics or our weight training. One more round of that, and then we got ball slams, let's go. All right, guys, I just did one more round of the overhead tosses. So 20 each set for a total of 40 overhead tosses. Remember, we got the 30 pound medicine ball or slam ball for that matter. This is filled with sand. I've had this ball for probably 10 years now. One of the best investments I ever made for all my fitness equipment, right? So now we're gonna end with 30 total ball slams. I'm gonna try to get them done unbroken, but I'm gonna keep a nice pace. This is gonna be another full body movement. So, ball slams are one of my favorite exercises. I have all my clients do these. Great for getting the heart rate up, and you don't need a lot of space to do them. 30 reps. right but this was done I wanted to be able to consistent do a consistent pace I probably could have went on to up to 50 right there it's all about breathing like I said guys 20 minutes total we did eight rounds of short sprints with the rotational jumps quick little warm before that 40 overhead tosses 30 slams you know with taking a few minute breaks total so 20 minutes of total work with breaks Heart rate's up, excellent way to condition the body and help facilitate recovery to other muscle groups, right? Like I said, when I got here, my chest was lit, my back was like, it was tight. I ain't feeling no soreness anywhere right now, just due to the fact that we uptake so much oxygen, elevate the heart rate so much, and have so much blood flow now going around all the muscles. It's gonna help facilitate the recovery without directly stimulating any type of breakdown in our main muscles, chest, back, shoulders all right guys hope you enjoy this routine don't forget man add your conditioning in to your training it's only going to make you a better athlete you don't have to do endless running that can get very boring and very stressful on the joints this type of work is actually more specific to high endurance based calisthenic sets you want to get more reps out this is going to be more beneficial to helping your muscles being able to endure more overall so try it out guys if you have a question leave it in the comment section I always get back to you guys Share the video with your friends and family. Like the video. Helps YouTube. Share it. Helps the algorithm out. I always appreciate the support, guys. Like always, peace out. Bar Naturals. Sad story, I ain't here for a symphony, no sympathy. When I was on the bench, you wouldn't sit with me. Now I'm on the court and I'm balling. My time's coming.